It's relatively well known that Steven Seagal isn't the most morally sound celebrity, but was he really responsible for the death of a puppy and over a hundred roosters in an Arizona SWAT raid? Keep watching to find out the bizarre details. Seagal became a full-fledged Russian citizen in November 2016, following years of hard lobbying. According to the state-owned Sputnik News, the actor had been applying for the citizenship for a while and was famous for his warm feelings toward Russia. Since his citizenship, Seagal has thrown his all into his adopted homeland. He became a member of the pro-Kremlin party, adjust Russia for truth in 2021, and is an outspoken supporter of Russia's stance on Crimea and Ukraine. Besides that, he brings up Vladimir Putin at every opportunity. Seagal once praised Putin as being, quote, one of the greatest living world leaders and said he likes to think of him as a brother. Sadly for Seagal, the bromance seems more than a little one-sided. A Putin spokesperson told BuzzFeed News, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a huge fan, but he's definitely seen some of his movies. Sexual assault, harassment, and rape allegations have plagued Steven Seagal over the decades. Multiple women, including Jenny McCarthy, Portia de Rossi, and Juliana Margulies, have made accusations. Margulies told Katie Couric about an alleged rehearsal involving Seagal and a gun in a hotel room. De Rossi admitted fleeing an audition after Seagal allegedly, quote, unzipped his leather pants. Jenny McCarthy told Movie Line about a supposed Under Siege 2 casting call that involved just Seagal and a shag carpet. She claimed he was focused on her Playboy past, not her acting skills. Seagal allegedly ordered McCarthy to undress because the movie involved nudity. A tearful McCarthy pointed out that the script included zero nakedness. Seagal purportedly grabbed her, demanding that she never tell anybody about their interaction. Rachel Grant accused Seagal of sexual assault. Two ex-personal assistants accused him of sexual harassment, as well as four former Warner Brothers employees. Lisa Guerrero claimed of her experience with the action star, In my case, I was Harvey Weinstein by Steven Seagal. Ray Don Chong made similar claims. Cheryl Schumann sued for sexual harassment and assault and battery. Regina Simons alleged Seagal raped her when she was 18 years old, and Fabiola Dadis accused him of sexual harassment. Meanwhile, Seagal's lawyer vehemently denied every single accusation made against his client and refuted all claims of any wrongdoing. Steven Seagal always likes to be the in-control alpha male in the room, so it's no surprise he's been accused of attacking and intimidating cast and crew on film sets. John Leguizamo told QTV that Seagal shoved him up against a wall during the filming of Executive Decision. Leguizamo said it all kicked off after he chuckled at a decree Seagal issued upon arriving at rehearsal one day. Leguizamo explained, He comes in and says, I'm in command. What I say is law. Exit wound stunt coordinator Stephen Quadros alleged Seagal repeatedly attempted to square up to him when he tried to introduce himself. Quadros claimed to AD Combat, he had that look in his eyes as he squared up with me again. Getting weirder still, Sean Connery claimed that Seagal intentionally broke his wrist while working as a fight coordinator on the Never Say Never Again James Bond flick. Connery explained to Jay Leno, I got a little cocky because I thought I knew what I was doing, because the principle of Aikido, it's defense. Then I got a bit flash, and I held up my arm, and he broke my wrist. Steven Seagal landed in hot water while filming his show Steven Seagal Lawman. The actor may have had good intentions when he conducted a raid on a suspected cockfighter's home, but it was ludicrously heavy-handed to say the least. Seagal rammed the tank through the front gate of the home, accompanied by other armed vehicles, a bomb robot, and a heavily armed SWAT team. A PETA post read, Steven Seagal does not take kindly to cruelty to animals and was more than happy to help his pal, Maricopa County, Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio, himself an outspoken cruelty to animals foe, who was serving a search warrant for Jesus Sanchez Yovera's home. Seagal and Sheriff Arpaio found 130 roosters and cockfighting paraphernalia. However, the animal rights activist group failed to mention that authorities allegedly killed over 100 animals during the incident. As per TMZ, the raid resulted in Seagal and Arpaio being issued with a notice of claim. In the claim, which precedes a lawsuit filing, Yovera insisted that the raid was unfounded because his roosters were raised for show purposes only. Yovera also alleged his kid's puppy was shot dead by officers, in addition to over 100 roosters being exterminated. Steven Seagal is a contradiction. On one hand, he's a devout Buddhist who likes to wax on, wax off about nonviolence. On the other, he's a weapons and arms trade lover, promoter, and lobbyist. Let me see if I can start to get good here. I'm gonna aim for the match now. As per Talking Points memo, Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin pushed hard for Seagal to become, quote, the face of Russia's weapons industry. According to the Moscow Times, Russian firearms manufacturer Orsis employed Seagal to promote and lobby in the USA on their behalf in 2013. Seagal also promoted the warlord weapon of choice, the Kalashnikov, up until 2014. The Izvestia newspaper alleged Seagal was nixed from being a brand ambassador for the rifle makers because of the ever-escalating, quote, tensions between the US and Russia over Ukraine. 
Kalashnikov denied the claims in a statement, insisting, "...the U.S. sanctions have in no way influenced our decision to cooperate with Steven Seagal." In addition, according to the National News, Seagal is brand ambassador for UAE-based armored vehicle manufacturers, The Street Group. Seagal said in 2021, "...I'm interested in weapons, military history, tanks, and armored cars, and I'd heard about Strait. I was very impressed. These armored vehicles are probably the best in the world." Strait has been accused of selling vehicles to U.S. gang members, as well as war-torn countries such as South Sudan and Libya, according to CBC. Steven Seagal's marital history reads like a horror movie script. He met his first wife, Miyako Fujitani, at LAX in 1974. And it wasn't love at first sight, well, for Fujitani anyway. She told Aikido Today magazine, "...when I met Steve, he had long hair, and he was very tall and skinny. I hate that type. Skinny with long hair. I was frightened. He looked like a Japanese ghost." Still, the couple married and had two children. But the fairy tale ended after Seagal returned to the U.S. to further his career. According to Spy Magazine, before Seagal left Japan, he vowed to Fujitani, "...I will never betray you." So it must have come as a shock when he married his second wife, Adrian LaRussa, in May 1984, especially since he wasn't divorced from Fujitani until 1987. As per U.S. Weekly, Seagal then cheated on LaRussa with Kelly LeBrock, whom he eventually married and had three kids with. They divorced in 1996 after she discovered Seagal had been having an affair with their nanny, Arissa Wolf. Seagal and Wolf didn't marry, but they did have a child together, a daughter named Savannah. As per Hollywood Mask, Seagal met his fourth wife, Elle Batsuk, in 2001. They welcomed their son, Kunzang, in 2009. During a 2003 mob-related extortion trial, the defense team's strategy was to paint Steven Seagal as, quote, a pathological liar, according to the Los Angeles Times. One possible tall tale is Seagal's claim of working with the Central Intelligence Agency while living in Japan. He told the publication, "...you could say that I became an advisor to several CIA agents in the field, and through my friends in the CIA, met many powerful people and did special works and special favors." Seagal alleged that he helped the Shah of Iran flee the country following the 1979 revolution. He also alleged to have carried out security work for President Anwar Sadat and Bishop Desmond Tutu. Seagal admitted, "...I'd be very happy if nobody believes me. I don't think you can find anyone in the agency who can prove they work for the agency." One person who doesn't believe Seagal is Gary Goldman. According to Spy Magazine, Seagal boasted to the former mercenary about having been a Navy SEAL. Goldman says he stopped believing Seagal's SEAL story when the actor freaked out after encountering choppy waters while on a Zodiac raft. Goldman also claimed Seagal couldn't read a map or compass. The duo had been working on a screenplay together before fighting over money and writing credits. Spy alleged that Goldman fired off a letter to the Los Angeles Times as retribution, calling Seagal's claims of working in the intelligence world a fable. Steven Seagal alleges to have helped clean up the mean streets of Tokyo during his time living in Japan in the late 1970s with his first wife, Miyaka Fujitani. Seagal claims that he battled with the Yakuza, the notorious Japanese organized crime syndicate, in addition to a random assortment of other criminal lowlifes. He boasted to Movie Line, "...I jumped right in their faces. I was fearless." However, Fujitani shot Seagal's claims down in flames. She insisted in an interview with Spy, "...it is a lie. He once chased some drunks away from the dojo but never was involved with the Yakuza." Coincidentally, Seagal plays a CIA CIA operative who travels to Japan to investigate and battle with the Yakuza following the murder of a government official in the 2005 action flick Into the Sun. According to the New York Post, former CIA officer Herbert Saunders claims Seagal has a questionable relationship with the truth. Saunders testified during the 2003 trial of Gambino mobsters charged with attempting to extort Seagal. "...I don't think he's able to sort out fantasy from fact. I think he sees himself in roles he's played in movies, ranging from hard-nosed tough cop to guy who's saving mongooses in the woods of Oregon." Steven Seagal has serious issues when it comes to female journalists. In 2017, the Daily Mail obtained audio from a 1998 Above the Law promo interview between the actor and a male reporter. After claiming that females always quiz him about his sex life, Seagal admitted, "...the few times that I had a hard time in interviews, it was usually with women. They should go into pornography or something else instead of journalism if they want to hear that." Anita Bush allegedly experienced Seagal's wrath while investigating him for the Los Angeles Times in 2002. According to an FBI affidavit, the veteran journalist found a bullet hole in the windshield of her car. Nearby were a dead fish, a rose, and a note warning stop. A female freelancer wrote about a hellish meeting with Seagal for The Guardian. Cassie Lane claimed he arrived with, quote, eight bucks and blondes and was spellbound by the cleavage all night. Then, as per The Independent in 2018, Seagal stormed out of an interview with BBC reporter Kirsty Wark after she asked about the multiple sexual misconduct allegations made against him. When the knives come out, no words need to be spoken. 
Steven Seagal claims to be a devout Buddhist, despite multiple allegations of sexual assault and misconduct, bragging about conducting CIA special ops, and a die-hard love of all things weapons-related. Seagal told Forbes, "...I'm a Buddhist. I have a relationship with all sentient beings, and I try to do all that I can to protect them. Even if it is only a small difference that I can make, I would sacrifice myself in a heartbeat for another." Seagal was recognized as a reincarnation of the 17th-century Lama Turton Chung Drag Dorje. In 1997, Tibetan leader Pinor Rinpoche honored the actor in a ceremony at an Indian monastery. As per The Guardian, in the Buddhist hierarchy, Lama Seagal is just a notch down from the Dalai Lama himself. But how it went down is a little murky. Seagal claimed during a retreat, "...I was in a monastery in Kyoto and met some monks from Tibet who had been tortured by the Chinese. As I was the only one who had studied herbology, bone manipulation, and acupuncture, I treated them, and there was an immediate connection." However, there's speculation that Seagal's reincarnation recognition may stem from him having donated a boatload of money to one of Rinpoche's schools. A Buddhist news group member wrote, "...recognizing a tulku, especially when it is an American person with lots of fame and fortune, is like buying a stock option." If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673.